thank you all very much for coming today. I'm very honored to receive this award, uh, and I'm uh, thrilled to see people from many different parts of my life here today. I also uh, wish to thank those persons who were uh, very important to organizing today's ceremonies. The two Melanies from the ceremonies office, um, also uh, Susan Edelstein, our Art Lab Gallery Director, and Charles Harris, the artist, the MFA student whose work you're going to see during the reception. And I'd also uh, like to thank Troy Willett and uh, Kim Newdorf from my department. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you a quick uh, a whiz through of a series of slides relating to my academic biography, I suppose, and then I'm going to launch into a, a, um, a more formal part of the presentation, and I'm going to deliver a short paper that I think is accessible to everybody. There's no technical language involved. Okay, great. So there I am back in 1987 when I came to Western. All right, there I am. When I came to Western, I have to say I was underwhelmed. And you'll see the reason why in a minute. Voila, there was the Department of Visual Arts. Okay, It was in a, a temporary uh, series of portables. Uh, it was inhabited by groundhogs, mice, and raccoons, just as much as students. Uh, I hate to say this too, but there were PCBs stored right next to the building. Uh, it was a health and safety disaster. Um, finally, in the, uh, well, I was in that building for seven years, uh, but uh, I'm the only survivor from that period, uh, except for two men in the studio. Uh, so there we go. And by the way, I was the first woman hired in this department as well. Uh, so. In any event, in the early 1990s, uh, when Bob Ray, then the NDP Premier of Ontario, came to power and was spending uh, during the first part of his tenure as Premier, our building was in fact uh, approved at that time. So thanks to Bob Ray, we are celebrating the 50th anniversary of our department this year, and I think we should be inviting Bob Ray to the celebrations because it's really his government that made our new building possible, the one we're sitting in today, and the Labatt's obviously donated a bit of money for the naming rights. All right, how did I become interested in art history? Well, I have a very weird uh, biography here. I actually worked in a chainsaw factory in Germany, uh, even when I was in grade 13 in high school, because I was learning languages at the time. And so there I was working at a major German chainsaw factory, and it was there then that I had the opportunity to go out and look at experienced landscapes and cultures that were not my own. I had grown up in the Niagara region, we had Niagara Falls, but we didn't have things like this. This is a former uh, medieval monastery from the 12th century. I thought, whoa, I'm converted to the study of the Middle Ages right away. Let's use the languages for that. All right, I ended up writing a dissertation on uh, sculpture and architecture at this great cathedral along the Middle Rhine in Germany. As you see, it took over 200 years uh, to build it. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I worked on, yeah, as I say, architecture and sculpture there. All right. Uh, this is the type of work of art that I study. Uh, I work in all media, architecture, sculpture, stained glass, ivory carvings, enamels, you name it. Uh, so this is one of the sites I've uh, actually published quite a lot on. And yes, when uh, being involved in uh, the International Forum means that you meet a lot of interesting people. You come to, you engage with people of different mentalities and outlooks, and I think that's really mind expanding. And so I really enjoy meeting others who are involved in an international network of art scholarship. All right, what do I do? Well, I call myself an all-round art historian. I look 360 degrees, I hope. I deal uh, hands-on with objects. I'm trained to do that. Objects from different media and different cultures. There I am handling a 6th century uh, tapestry fragment in the University of Toronto Art Centre on the left. And above you see a carved 12th century capital 
that uh, is a capital surmounts a column. Uh, and that one's actually in the Harvard Art Museums, but I study things like that. But I don't just study objects, I study uh, primary re uh, materials related to them. I'm very interested in the history of collecting, history of museums, as uh, uh, Dr. Deacon said. Uh, so this is the type of work that I do as well. I look at one of a kind. Uh, primary documents. I have to travel a great deal to archives in Europe and here in North America, and I work in many languages. Again, you won't be able to decipher that uh, up there in the upper left. That is not English, and it's not even in a contemporary script in German. So it's very time-consuming work, not digitized. All right, uh, I also organize scholarly loan exhibitions. Um, also trained in museum work. Uh, so this is a, an example of one that I organized at the Harvard Art Museums, 2003-2004. Uh, uh, um, this was an exhibition that uh, explored the history of the Fogg Art Museum, which is the flagship uh, academic art museum in North America, one of the top ones in the world. Uh, its history had not been explored, so I worked with documents, with objects, and so on to uh, paste that together. It was very significant because it was all about the institutionalization of art historical study in North America. Uh, this is really the, this was the training ground for all museum curators, directors, art conservators, art historians, art critics, uh, for much of the 20th century. So it uh, was a model kind of building that merged teaching spaces with museum collections, with uh, uh, hands-on learning with techniques, art techniques, so studio practice, and so on. And this uh, structure and uh, pedagogical model also had an impact here at Western because the, uh, the first, the founder of our department was trained here. So this is very important. To us and yeah this is what the museum looks like today Harvard is investing very heavily in the arts and humanities and just spent 350 million dollars redoing the museum okay uh, I also have organized exhibitions a little closer to home uh, this is one I did uh, in conjunction with Museum London uh, the Macintosh gallery special collections at the DB Weldon library and in partnership with the University of Toronto Art Centre and the Museum of Ontario Archaeology. Uh, this was a project that was designed for students um, to learn how to uh, create new research and generate ideas. We published a book in addition uh, to the exhibition uh, organizing this, and it was all about of exploring Canada's um, history and visual culture through the lens of the Middle Ages. So that was really quite a, quite a novel idea. Uh, yeah, then back to my teaching. That was, uh, that was a student-oriented project. Uh, undergrad students, this is the sort of image I, that they send me. Um, <laughs> they've been in the classroom here, and then they actually get to see the real thing in Europe. They jump for joy, they turn cartwheels, the whole business. So here we go. So from the, the 2D uh, teaching here in the department to the real thing, I think that's what's so exciting about teaching the history of art, uh, getting this kind of response from students, because students do travel. We live in a global world. We have to be uh, open to understanding different cultures, not just Canadian culture or contain, uh, Canadian art. Okay, uh, now students, graduate students, I've had some wonderful graduate students, and I hasten to tell the authorities here at the university that all of these students have been very successful in landing high profile jobs in museums like the Royal Ontario Museum, uh, in, well, some are involved in digital librarianship imaging at the Robarts Research um, Center here, or, or Research Institute here at Western. Others have ended up as a website and graphic designers, uh, and the young man over here has ended up uh, in a curatorship at the Museum Schnuttgen in Cologne, one of Europe's top collections of medieval art. All right, we do field trips everywhere to medieval style buildings. I also or organize teaching exhibitions with graduate students uh, to help undergraduate students learn more about the Middle Ages. 
This is the poster for, uh, for an exhibition I organized in the D.B. Weldon Library. We go to museums, we do field trips to medieval inspired buildings. We, uh, we also put together websites so we disseminate the students' knowledge uh, out to the public, to the larger community. Um, and one of the things, I'm, this was a project I did on medieval modern. I'm always very interested in the vital dynamic linking the Middle Ages, medieval art and culture to the contemporary world. Uh, so uh, in this case, this is the topic we explored in that seminar. Uh, but this has really been an ongoing concern of mine and it's something I'm very interested in in my uh, current scholarship. Uh, so yeah, we have this in the, uh, in the popular realm as well. Uh, whoever thought that Walt Disney's uh, The Evil Stepmother in Walt Disney's animated film Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was actually based on a 13th century sculpture at Naumburg Cathedral. So this is a really very important dialogues uh, to explore. Uh, and so uh, in the scholarly realm, of course, this also pertains because we have medieval art and architecture, and that's fine. We're talking late antiquity up to about 1500. Uh, but everything that we know about those objects has really been constructed in the modern era. Uh, and uh, Germany and Austria were the countries where art history was first institutionalized as a discipline at the university level. And so I spent my first book uh, writing about these two fellows who were, uh, um, they, were they, they belonged to the founding generation of art historians. Uh, just to give you an idea of their impact, it was profound. They trained over 125 PhD students. If you start with nothing, you train 125 PhD students, they get spread out to universities around the world. And certainly the rise of Nazism in 1933, Hitler taking power, many of the scholars trained by these two men emigrated to uh, the United States and Canada and other countries. So Erwin Panofsky was a student of these two men here today. Thank you very much. So I'll just finish up. Thank you, Kathy. That was that was a fabulous talk, and the questions are are uh, were were entertaining and and uh, and excellent. So I want to uh, once again, on behalf of all of us, congratulate Kathy uh, for being chosen. It's pretty evident why she was chosen with uh, her her work and the kind of presentation she gave us today, which was so uh, wonderfully accessible as as well. I would say parenthetically, my supervisor many years ago said, "You know, Janice, it's not hard to make." It's difficult for people to understand when you're in our business. The real, the real <laughs> gift is is to make our work accessible, accessible. and and uh, and that was wonderfully accessible to, uh, today. So thank you very much, and to all of you, many of you, because there are other dups in the room, will know that uh, we display the distinguished university professors uh, at the Weldon uh, Library in the lobby. So I'd encourage you the next time you're at Weldon or walking by Weldon, uh, go in and you will see that there'll be a plaque honoring Kathy there uh, to be added to those with her distinguished colleagues uh, from, from Western. So please think about that. Um, we, uh, I'd like to again thank the people who have helped put this together today. So the people that Kathy thanked and of course ceremonies at Western do such a great job. Uh, I, there is a reception for us uh, in, just a, in just a moment. We're going to go to the Art Lab Gallery and to the Collins Commons. Um, there is a, uh, a um, uh, installation here in the Art Lab Gallery and Charles Lee Franklin Harris is the ar artist and I think he's in the room uh, today. He's at the back of the room uh, now, at the, standing at the back and he will be um, uh, in, the, in the Art Lab as we go and enjoy some uh, refreshments. So please um, uh, you know, uh, investigate and uh, be, be uh, free and brave to ask, uh, to ask questions of the artists. We're welcome and we're glad you could be here today. Uh, so with that then, I thank all of you for, for coming. It's great to see the kind of cross-section uh, of people that we get at the uh, Distinguished University Professor uh, presentations. And um, thank you again, Kathy. We'll go to the Art Lab now for, uh, you're all welcome, please, to join us. So once again, thank you and congratulations. Thank you.